we're going to celebrate our, our nation's birthday next Thursday. And the Americans that came up with that idea was something that had been sort of floating around for about 200 years, the idea that because God made someone, that they should have rights. Now prior to that time, it had to do with nobility, it had to do with land, but if you're just someone else, uh, you're, you were just fodder to work in the, in the mills or do whatever, but in America, they said, we hold these truths to be self-evident, which is a <coughs> gracious Jeffersonian way of saying, any idiot ought to understand this. This is, this is self-evident, Bozo. You'd be blind, deaf, and dumb. You know, that all men are created equal, endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights, and among those are life. So people, people want to come along and say, I don't want government involved. You're in the wrong country, because right there, the purpose of the government, life, liberty, notice the sequence. See, liberty is a precious little value if you're dead. You have to have life first, then liberty, then sewer systems and overpasses, but the first thing you do is life, <laughs> and, then, and then to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men. The purpose of the United States government was to do those two things, those three things, to have life and liberty, that we could pursue our goals. There was no, there was no example to follow. And yet, when those 56 men met in Philadelphia and drafted that piece of paper, they knew that when they signed it, they were signing their death warrant, that that was treason. Treason is punishable by death. And they were going to look for each one of them and come after them, and they, and they did. In Congress, the sponsor of any bill or piece of legislation is given the last opportunity to speak just before the vote. And John Adams was the sponsor of the, of the resolution. And when he got it, he, he said, sink or swim, live or die, survive or perish, I give my heart and my hand to this vote. It's true that in the beginning we aimed not at independence, but there's a divinity which guides our end. The arrogance of England has persisted. And unmindful of her interest for our good, which has obstinately persisted until now, independence is within our reach. We have but to reach forth for it, and it is ours. We may not live until the time that this resolution shall be made good. We may die, die colonists, die slaves, die ignominiously and on the scaffold. Be it so, be it so. But if it be the pleasure of heaven, to require the offering of my life, this victim shall be ready. But while I do live, let me have a country, or at least the hope of a country, and that a free country. Through the thick gloom of the present, I see the brightness of the future as the dawn in heaven. We shall make this a glorious, an immortal day. When we are in our graves, our children will honor it with festivities, with illuminations, with bonfires. On its annual return, they will shed tears, copious gushing tears, not of subjection and slavery, not of agony and distress, but of exultation and of gratitude and of joy. Sir, I believe the hour has come. My judgment approves this measure, and my whole heart is in it. All that I have, and all that I am, and all that I hope for in this life, I am ready here to stake upon it and leave off as I began that sink or swim, live or die, survive or perish. I am for the declaration. It is my living sentiment, and by the blessings of God, it will be my dying sentiment. Independence now, independence forever. They then took the vote. In order to break the gallows humor, they uh, Benjamin Franklin said, we must all hang together or we, or we will hang separately. <coughs> and uh, there, thereafter, when, when the representative from Delaware came, he was a skinny little fellow, and he said, you know, you're going to dangle in the wind for an hour before you pass away. <laughs> but they, they knew that what they were doing, nobody had ever done. They had no government. They had no army. They had no money. They had no country, 
They had a desire to be free and to take on the strongest military power on the planet. A third of the people in America wanted them beat were opposed to what they were doing. A third of them were for them, and then surprise, surprise, there were a third that didn't carry the way. <laughs> and yet they began a fight that over those next few years made it possible for us to have a place that people hope to someday escape to. My wife and I were, well, I, I've told the story. You, you basically get the idea. I remember one time we were at the, at the wall in East and West Germany, flying along and seeing they had, they had color photographs of where the army that had walked every inch every seven days, flown every inch every 24 hours, they had photographs of people trying to escape all during the 60s and 70s and 80s, trying to get out, and they had pictures of them where maybe they'd throw a, throw a mattress over the barbed wire and try to climb, and they saw that they, all, they always got killed. And yet, finally, the, the day came when, when the wall was coming down and Gorbachev didn't have the guts to, to shoot him. And when, once that happened, then they began to come with a vengeance. And they, were, they got that train, that, they loaded a train that was coming from East Germany to West Germany. And, and the people said that when they, when they came across the border, they saw the American soldiers for the first time. They said, it's the Americans, it's the Americans. It was like electricity went through the train. He said, now we are free. Now we are free. Well, that's what those people established this Independence Day that you and I could enjoy it together. And so as we lock hands and fight the battles that stand before us, uh, we're going to do it not only for ourselves, but for our children and for generations to come. And I applaud you and honor you for it. God bless you.